This podcast is being recorded and produced on Gadigal land. We pay our respects to the traditional custodians of this country and elders past, present. We extend our respect to any First Nations, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. I'm Brittany Saunders. And I'm Alright Hey, and this is High Scrollers, the podcast version of your favourite grip chat. If it's trending, going viral, or has you gripped, we're talking about it. Coming up on this episode, AJ has popped the big question to Brittany and she's going to tell us all about it. (laughs) Oh my gosh! Plus, I'm involved in it in some way or another. And we're going to hog's breath. (laughs) Literally, (laughs) we're going to hog's breath. We... Actually, let's just not even give any more context. Just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Plus, I found a contender for Royal Flush of the Year. One of the best things I've seen on the internet in a very, very long time. Can't wait to tell you about that. And we're adding a new segment to this episode. Uh, Brittany's been a bit sick of me ranting so much, so I thought, let's just keep it. At the end of the episode, you're going to get a new segment that's all about me ranting. And you can tell me whether you agree with me or not. Stick around and look forward to that. We'll be putting it in the broadcast channel on Insta and you have to let us know if you love it or you hate it. Deal me in, doll. Let's go. Good morning, Matthew. We have both shown up this morning wearing pink. And so has producer Hannah. Go Google Girl. All of us are wearing pink. And you know what? I kind of like it. (sighs) Barbie vibes. Barbie, no, Glinda vibes. Glinda yeah. vibes. Well, Matt, I had a dream about you on the weekend. Yeah, righto. This will be good. You know, everybody <laughs> loves hearing about other people's dreams. It's my favourite pastime. So enthralling. Tell me what happened. Are you being sarcastic? Yes. <laughs> you hate knowing people's dreams. Yes. Also, sorry to be a bitch, Hannah, but is my camera on? It is. I don't know. Oh, it is. Okay. Sorry. I I just looked up and thought I can't see myself and Mm, God forbid we don't get my face on camera this week. But anyway, what was your dream about? I'm just eating a chip. Okay. I know. We just ran to the vending machine here at Nova. Mm. I've just discovered there's a vending machine. I've got the breakfast of champions. I need to get a vending machine for the warehouse too. A Coke Zero. Plus the pie warmer. Um, Okay. (laughs) I had a dream on the weekend. It was about you and AJ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. You've got you've piqued my interest. AJ has had planned to propose to me, mm-hmm. and you were in on it. Mm-hmm. It was the most him proposal, and I'm appalled. Oh, okay. He had written, "Will you marry me?" in sausages <laughs> on the grass, but they were like big sausages. <laughs> And you were like, yes, like you were there and it was out in public and I was fucking mortified <laughs> and you were there fully encouraging this idea. There I am. Sorry, my camera's working now. <laughs> we can all breathe easy. You you were encouraging the idea and then I think I embarrassingly said yes because <laughs> like I was just like, fuck this. But then, I don't know if this is a clue of any kind, Matt, but the the dream changed a little bit. And you were doing a live show of your own. (laughs) And it was like a unique experience. And it was like two long tables, like a sit-down dinner experience. Okay. And in the middle of these two long tables was where you were doing your show. But it was a moving train. And you... You were like running along and jumping and then like it would stop and you would do your little segment and we were all eating dinner and you were in the middle on a moving train. So I don't know what that's trying to tell us. Yeah. You know, we have some people who like can interpret dreams who listen to okay. this podcast. A few of our scrollers messaged me when we've spoken about our dreams in the past. They've okay. messaged and said, this is what this means and this okay, is what, what this means. What does AJ proposing with sausages and Matt being on a moving train For his live show. While you're stationary eating dinner, While we're stationary eating like a fine dining dinner and you Mm. were putting on a show in the middle. Mm. That was my dream. There'll be some big explanation for that. We'll keep you updated if we can. Yeah. What do you do on the weekend? Um... Saturday, I just potted around, you know, ticked off the to-do list, did a couple things, washed the towels, washed the sheets... Uh, what did I do? Um, I wiped down the kitchen bench. Um, I didn't get to the bathroom. The bathroom still needs to be done. Mm. But it was just one of those days. Watered the plants around the house. It oh, was nice. Saturday. And then Sunday I went to Raging Waters you did. again. That looks so good. So where is that? <laughs> is that? It's out near like Blacktown, but only on the, you know, the M4 or whatever. I only, it felt like 20 minutes to get there. It was great. Can we go one time? Yes. 
a hundred percent. I'm not even kidding. It was so good. And this time around, we went the we went the level up. So yeah, I, went I saw your saw your fucking stories in your cabana with your mini fridge in the yeah, safe. Yeah, which I knew. I wish I knew that that mini fridge was there. I would have done a packed lunch with a little charcuterie board or oh, something. That would be good. Nice. You allowed to take your own? You can take your yeah, own food you can in take there because you can take your food in anyway. Which we did last time with an esky and everything. Um, but you know, it was just a bit difficult to work that out logistically throughout the day because the lockers are over one side of the park and then mm. we're lining up for an hour for a water slide. So obviously we've got the fast pass sorted this time because last time we were like, we must do that. And I'm so in my fast pass era. I'm in my theme park era, actually. I've been to quite a few theme I know, parks you're year, fucking 30 years old <laughs> and going to theme parks every weekend, but I'm here for it. Actually, you know what? I want to go with you but I want it to be not on school holidays and I want to go on a weekday. Uh-huh. Surely that okay. would be the best time to go. Yeah. Do you mean to like a uh, raging waters? Yeah. I don't know whether they're open throughout the week. I don't know. I have to check on that. But um, they've only just opened for the season. So it's only the second weekend. And mm. when we woke up on Sunday, we were going rain, hail or shine really, as long as they were open. Because who cares? People get turned away. Like if it's not a, if it's a rainy day, like they're like, oh, we can't go to the water park. I'm like, you're getting wet anyway, darling. Mm. Why, why not? Did you go on the slides? Yeah, did it all. But it was so good because like last time it took us like three hours to do three slides and we were done in about half an hour. And then we were just able to sit in the cabana, order some food. Like it was a really relaxed day. I've never had such a relaxing day at a, at a theme park before or a water park. <laughs> You so are I, so random. I highly recommend. You just, are 30 years old yeah. and going to think park. I know, but maybe it's a midlife crisis. <laughs> you know? I'm here for it though. Like I honestly want to go with you one time. Hannah, you're coming. Yeah. We're going to Rage and Waters. We're going we'll do, we'll do um, High Scrollers live from the Bombora, which is one of the slides at Rage and Water. Oh, it's real fun. It's good. Although the first time I went on it, I thought it was breaking. I thought I, I'd broken it as we were going down because, like, I don't know, it does this weird thing, shoots water under your bum. I thought it was the bottom of the thing collapsing. I thought, um, this is Final Destination. I'm dying here. But anyway, it was a really fun day. And I didn't scream that much, so um, I still have my voice. Remember last time? Because I went earlier this year as well, in like January. Mm. And the next day I got here and I was like, hello, everyone. Follow the yellow big road. Can't speak, you know. But no, I'm all sorted. I'm feeling good. What's next? Um, Well, Movie World's actually messaged me. (laughs) Here we go. (laughs) And said The Wizard of Oz Land is opening soon, which is Mm. very exciting. Um, they're bringing two new roller coasters and a fully immersive little area to Movie World, and it's all Wizard of Oz themed, obviously to coincide with the Wicked movie coming out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and I'm very excited for that. Uh, and then we've got Scooby Doo opening next year, allegedly, allegedly. So I think I'll be going back to Movie World, not only to ride the Scooby-Doo coaster, but um, Movie World messaged me and were like, we'd love to have you be one of the first people to come up and ride the new Wizard of Oz rides and and check out the Wizard of Oz munchkin land. I don't know what they're calling it. And I was like, Dal, I'll be there with bells on. I'll pay you to let me be one of the first (laughs) on the rides. (laughs) I feel like, so I used to love rides. I get a bit motion sick on the repetitive ones, like one that will go around in a circle, Mm -hmm. make me feel really sick. But... I think now, I don't know, I'm just at a point in my life where I think I don't want to ever go on a ride again. Oh, that's insane. Only because, like, I fear that the one time I go on it, it's going to fail. It's going to malfunction. So, do it for the plot. We can tell the story on High Scrollers. What if I don't live? No, but when, when the heck... What are your chances? You've got more chances of being hit by a car. You drive a car yeah, every so day. Yeah, so true. I don't know. You know. I'm just like, fuck that. Like, I think I'll just stand down and watch. I'm going to be that person. Also, I think I'm con- content with death at this late stage in my life. I'm just like, you know, if it happens, it happens. Whatever. Don't cry about it. Just celebrate me. Move well, on. I've actually got an update as well, speaking of death. Mm. Um, I've got an update on my will. Oh, this would be good. Yeah. <laughs> what did I get? <laughs> no, so... Interestingly enough, so if you missed it, like a few episodes back, I was talking about how I was, I'm was i going to get my will done just because we've got a lot of companies and all this kind of stuff. Like what actually happens if I fucking drop dead tomorrow? So it's a weird thing. And I put it on my story saying that I, I've been and like started the process and so many people that work in like law firms and stuff were replying to my story saying this is actually so good for you to promote for people to do this because you have no idea like the mess that can happen when someone doesn't have a will. Mm -hmm. Um, So what I learned is, well, in my experience um, is 
you don't have to go, okay, I'm leaving this person this and this person that. Like you can if you want to, but you don't have to, which was really interesting. And the thing that opened my eye the most, I've actually written it down, all the other people that I had to put on there, um, so there's a substitute executor, a substitute attorney, and a substitute guardian. And I'm like, what the fuck are all these things? And then he was giving us all these scenarios. So, for example, like what happened if AJ and I died, let's say, in a car crash, trigger warning, <laughs> at the same time? He obviously can't do your will. He so can't, you need yeah. Else. So then, like, in your will, I've had to put, like, okay, so for example, if I die, AJ gets everything. Mm-hmm. Like, everything goes to AJ, the companies go to AJ. Like, everything I own goes to AJ. But then you have to have another thing in there in case of the scenario of AJ and I dying at the same time. Then who is the person? And the scary thing that I haven't ever thought about is if it was really unfortunate and AJ and I passed away at the exact same time. Like fate and like all our stores and everything, like you can't just shut down a company because mm. you're in leases. Like Westfield doesn't give a fuck if you and your partner die and you've got a lease. Like you've got to still keep paying the rent and everything. Would you not have company insurance that could cover that sort of stuff though? Like someone's died. Co- so- yeah, I do have company insurance. I'm not sure how it works, but like I've had to put someone on my will that in the scenario of AJ and I both dying at the same time, someone is there to, they have to come in and like take over my companies and I've written in there, they will get paid a lot of money. It's surprise. It's you. No, it's not. (laughs) (laughs) No, my eyes are widening over here going, thank God this isn't my job. Like, thank God I'm not. And so it's one of my friends that I've known for like a really long time. And like, I even had to call him and be like, look, I know this is fucked to say, but if AJ and I die, <laughs> I'm leaving this to you. Yeah. But the good thing is if that was to ever happen, yes, my friend would come in and take a hold of it, but then you get like um solicitors and attorneys or whoever the fuck and they figure out what's going to happen to the company. Mm-hmm. And then there's the other thing as well I've had to do um, if I like was in a car accident and I'm alive but not... Yeah. There Whatever anymore. That means, yeah. Um, and I've done the thing where if two doctors sign off and say that I'm not coming back from that kind of thing, like if two doctors say, yep, she's like brain dead or whatever. Yeah, brain yep. dead and not coming back. If two doctors agree to that, then don't resuscitate me or whatever it is. Yeah. And um, my solicitor was saying, that's a really important thing that we should put in our wills because it's devastating if let's say that happened and I didn't have that in my will, the do not resuscitate thing, Mm -hmm. then AJ would have to make the decision that they're going to turn it off. And he said the guilt that that partner then has, because they feel responsible for the death of their partner. Mm. Whereas like if we have decided now, if I'm ever in that situation, don't resuscitate me, just let me die because I'm going to die anyway, then the partner doesn't feel guilt. Yeah. Which is, it's just fucking nuts. This whole thing is nuts. And the first thing that my solicitor said when I sat down is like, all right, so you're definitely going to (laughs) die. Like that was the start of the conversation. And it was so like, uh, what sobering to have this experience. And it's real for all of us. (laughs) Like... It's fucking wild. We should have left this for a close friends episode. This seems very full on it for is. whatever time it is on a Tuesday that everyone's listening yeah, to this. Yeah, sorry everyone. Sorry, <laughs> it's not even Wednesday st- yet. We're already talking about death and wills and do not resuscitate. Yeah, anyway, go get your will done. <laughs> <sighs> to save your family and friends like any hassle in the future, it's good to have. You can do a will even if you don't have anything to like actually give anyone, right? Yes. Like you can you, you just make all your wishes like you do it, not resuscitate. Exactly things. all you those things so those that your family things. doesn't have to do that. Because I feel like we we're so like used to wills being um something that's just like in Hollywood movies and mm. here's thirty billion dollars to the And you have the estate and yeah, you get the house. Yeah. But no, like go and get it done even for those scenarios where like you might have an awful accident and you can't um, be in control of your body anymore. Mm. You have to put a person on your will that is the person that's going to make the decision of what's going to happen with you. Yeah. It's fucking nuts. Nice. Well, so that's my update on my will. Please be upstanding for the royal flush. 
Well, yes, as you heard Queen Liz just say. What? Queen Liz just said. Oh, I thought you said time. Queenly. I'm like, what's that? Queen Liz, RIP. Um, no, she just said it's time for the Royal Flash of the Week. Best thing we've seen on the internet this week. And this week I have a contender for Royal Flush of the Year, which is obviously coming up in a few weeks. Over our holiday break in the new year, we're going to give you our Royal Flush of the Year. And this one is a hot contender because Ooh. this is one of the best things I've not only ever seen on the internet, but in my life. And I think it will make sense to you. Okay. Can you just read out what I've written down there? Yes, you've written. Because as I've said before, we just give like pointers. So Brittany has no idea what I'm about to say, but I think the dot point that I've put on the screen <laughs> is very funny and worth you reading it out. Okay. You, you have written, big fat tart, the stooky. <laughs> <laughs> now, where do you think this could be going? There is a big fat tart, like a pie mm-hmm. thing, and the stooky is <laughs> a poo. <laughs> That's what I'm getting. You know what? What? You are so far off, but also so close. It's got nothing to do with poo, but it does have to do with, I guess, tarts or cakes or things in general. So the big fat tart is a a TikTok account. I think she must sell. I didn't dive into it, but I think it must be a little small business that sells, um, you know, cakes and things. She has replied to my comment saying, I'd love to send you some out, but I actually haven't replied, responded to her yet because I'm like, oh, I don't know if I do because I may be addicted to these. Okay. Here we go. This, the, the Stooky. Oh, the Stooky. The Stooky. I thought it was Stooky. It is a cross between a cookie and a sticky date pudding. Oh. <gasps> <gasps> oh, do you want nah. me to show you the video? Yeah, do you want me to show you the me. video? It looks delicious. Hang on, let me get it up. The stooky. Sticky date cookie. Fuck me up. Here we go. Have a look at this, Brit. Sorry, scrollers. You won't be able to see this, but you can hear Brittany's reaction. Okay, I know you've heard of the crookie and the brookie, but let me introduce you to the stooky. Oh. A sticky date filled cookie that is topped with a butterscotch sauce. Fuck this me is up. Next viral it's thing. so okay. thick and deep. It's, it looks like, to give you a visual, it looks like a mini quiche sort of thing. You know, yeah, it's like little, really when you tall. Get it looks like eight centimetres high. Yeah, canapes at a, at a party. You get those little kind of pie-looking quiche things. Mm. Imagine that, except the outside is cookie and the inside is sticky date pudding. Where is this person based? Um, I'm actually not sure, but the TikTok account is big.fat.tart. Nice. And... Oh, Big fat tart. If you're if you're listening, you've got to you've got to sort your page out because um, she's got here like September menu, but I don't know where. Oh, okay, she's tagged the location as Mid North Coast, but you've got no link to your Instagram, no website, no like. I don't know how to order from you. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing on your page to um, tell me where to go to order this. As I said, she commented back to me and said, oh, "I'd love to send you some," but the problem is. I find I think I th- I think that this would be your undoing, absolutely. <laughs> and I just would Let's order, order some. Stookies. I want to support. Yeah, for sure. But support Macquarie. Oh, support, support Macquarie. Macquarie. Okay, nice. Have you found an Instagram or yeah. anything? But she only has eighty followers on TikTok. But yeah, on Instagram it's the same. Big fat tart. But no I love the business tart. name, by the way. Big fat tart. Does, that is great. Yeah, I a know. great business name. Custom. So you can order on Instagram. There's like all the links and everything. Okay, great. So she got the Instagram sorted, the TikTok. It might be one of those things as well where TikTok, um, you know, you need a certain amount of followers before you can put a link and things like that. So I'll give her the grace there. Maybe we can all go follow Big Fat Tart and comment on the sticky date pudding TikTok and say, hi, scrollers sent me. (laughs) Yeah. And we don't want you to send us them for free. We will support you in order. But can you order online? Yeah, I guess so. But I'm just scared I'm going to order and be like, that's the best thing I've ever had in my life. Are we recording next Monday? Um, what's, yeah, probably. We're ordering something. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Um, but that is my Royal Flush of the week, if not the month, and Mm -hmm. potentially the year, the Stooky. I've never wanted anything so bad in my life before, but it's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. You know what I mean? That's all I'll eat. That will become my full-time diet of (laughs) Stookies. You could meal prep it too. You know how you love meal prepping anything? Yeah, well, you know, I've got an addictive personality. So watch me become other people are addicted to all these things. I'll be addicted to Stookies. That's all I'll do. I went through a phase last year of literally just eating like eggs and bacon for breakfast. every. I'd cook it. I'd fry it up in the fry pan. 
I look back at that now and go, how did I have the energy of bother? Why was I bothered to get up and dirty every pan, pot and bloody everything, use all the ingredients in the kitchen to make myself bacon and eggs in the morning? I think about that now. I can barely shake together a protein shake and walk out the door. Like, I'm like, who was I? See, I always hear people talking about addictive personalities. Like, everyone I meet, I swear, they're like, I've got such an addictive personality. I think I am the polar opposite. <laughs> really? Yes. Like, I think I'm going to get into something and then, no, nah, something else. Oh, uh, okay. Like, I, yeah. I, I can't stick to one thing. I can't concentrate on one thing. I'll be obsessed with something, but for five seconds, because I'm already on to the next thing. Well, so, speaking of, how's your lawnmower game going? Haven't played it for ages. Yeah, there you go. When was the last time you played The Sims? Years. Wow. But that's because I like played it a lot in COVID lockdown times, mm. and I just I don't have the time. What about your VR headset? Oh, I haven't used that for you quite a while. Used the VR yeah, I want it. I keep got got meaning to. You know, I get addicted to these things, but only for like a week. Where's your aura ring? Oh, it's actually just sitting <laughs> on, my, on my bathroom fucking vanity. <laughs> I lost so the charger. Oh, so I'm the so opposite bad. of an addicted personality, addictive oh, personality, God. and I think that's why I do so much like in my business and work because I just do one thing, then on to the next and back to the other. You're like, going to reno this whole house and then not even be able to enjoy it and go, oh, fuck, I'm over it now. <laughs> <laughs> Surely not. Yeah. All right. Well, what's your Royal Flush of the Week, please? So... Just something that I saw, again, it's probably like a hyperfixation thing, like that I would just find good for five seconds. But have you seen the jelly cat patisserie in Paris? No. So you know what a jelly cat is, right? No. Little stuffed animals and they're all cute and like all different things. Google girl. Yeah, go Google girl. <laughs> so these things are called jelly cats. You can get them at the shops in Australia. Helly cat. <laughs> have you seen all these, Matt? Like those bunnies? Um... No. You've never seen jelly cats, those bunnies. Like, they're like the iconic. Okay. Yeah. No, I haven't. So, what, like a Care Bear or what are those? Kind of like a beanie kid. What are those plushies called? I see at Kmart and they suck me in and I want to get them. They're the pillow pet sort of things. Squishmallow things? Squishmallow. Yeah. Fuck me. If you're a mum out there with a kid who wants a squishmallow and you don't get it, just let them know. I get it. All right. <laughs> hey, I see those things. I can't help but going over and giving them a big squeeze. Well, that's how I feel about jelly cats, too. They're so cute. I've never bought one. But Do they you- smell? Uh, I don't think so. Like, they look like they should be scented. And they're not cheap either. Like, look how much these are. $60 for one little fucking thing. Mm. Um, anyway, so that's jelly cats. They're like a kid's toy. They're really cute. Um, anyway, they've opened like a shop in Paris. I don't know if it's multiple shops. And I only saw one video, so correct me if I'm wrong on this. But they've opened like a shop, which is a patisserie, which looks like a bakery. And you go in there to buy your jelly cat, but they serve it to you like it's a bakery. Look, Matt, on the screen. Oh. And so all these jelly cats, which are just stuffed toys, they're all set up in this beautiful um, bakery. And then the the workers, they make it a whole fucking experience. So you go up behind the counter and you're like, I'll have the croissant one, please. And they're like, okay. And they get it with the tongs and they toss it in the air and they're like acting. They're like, do you want me to heat it up? So then they put it on like a fake hot plate and they're like, pshh. Oh my gosh, that's so And fun. they do this whole fun interactive experience to box up your jelly cat. And I just think that is the most creative, fun, engaging way of selling stuffed toys. And see, they've got like the piping stuff and then they go... And like pretend to put icing on it and stuff. And they make the sounds. With yeah, the they make the sound effects and they decorate it. But it's all pretend and it's just so imaginative. Everyone needs to look up. Jelly Cat Patisserie on TikTok. It is just so cute and I wish I could experience it. That's fun. I like that. Yeah, and I want to go. Well, let's go. To Paris. Well, what are you doing tomorrow? I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> Your shout. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I love being a little bit nerdy and I quite love a word. <laughs> I love a book. I'm a reader. I'm yeah. a literature person. See, you know? yeah, you are an addictive personality. See, I'm the opposite. I can't fucking read a book to save my life. I read oh. one chapter and I'm, I forgot what I read. I'm almost at 100 for the year. I'll let you all know. We oh. are only a few books away from completing 100 books in 2024. No one is as good as me. But it's been a big week for words. 
huge week for the word community, to be fair, because there are two things that I want to talk about today. First of all, word of the year has been announced. Now, Google Girl, could you go and give us, go and find us some of the um, recent words of the years from the last like five years? So, for example, 2020's word of the year was lockdown. Who decides this? Well, actually, let's go up on this page and see if there's an explanation as to how. Here we go. It says, the Collins English Dictionary announces a word of the month each month and then picks a word of the year at the end of the year. A short list of notable words or those that have come to prominence in the previous 12 months. So, what have we all used more than anything? I mean, in 2020, it was lockdown because that was a word that we hadn't really used before mm-hmm. and it came to prominence. Right. So, in 2020, it was lockdown. In 2021, it was NFT. Uh, in 2022, it was permacrisis, which I've never even heard of. I've Go never Google, heard that girl. Word what in does my that life? mean? Permacrisis. A permanent crisis, one that continually drags on. Interesting. That's kind of devastating that that was 2022, but I've never, I've never, um, Heard that one. AI was 2023's word of the year. AI. Again, that makes sense. And 2024's word of the year, they had some uh, in the short list here. Delulu made the top of the list. Romanticy made the top of the list. Yapping. Raw dogging. Look smacksing. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. But anyway, the, the word that came out on top, which is actually just so funny. The word of the year for 2024, according to the Collins Dictionary is brat, as in Charlie XCX brat, mm. as mm. in, I don't know what. Not you, not, not Google Girl clicking on brat, the album Wikipedia page to give us info on, on brat. I mean, it's pretty fucking iconic. Like, it's the most simple thing I've ever seen. Like, right. a green background with a blurry font. Yeah, and imagine, um, I don't know if this has ever, like, been done before, but imagine, like, Creating an album and then your album name is, is the, the word of the year. Word of the year, according to the Collins Dictionary. That's kind of iconic. So we had the Grammy nominations come out earlier this week as well. Mm. Um, all of my faves are up for nominations. Sabrina Carpenter, I think, has six in total, which is so good um, because I want to see her win as much as possible. Hopefully she takes out Best New Artist. Would love that for her. Yep. Charlie XCX was nominated a couple of times as well. Um Taylor Swift's got a few. Beyonce's got a few. But I saw, like, everyone was upset because Ariana didn't get something for... Eternal Sunshine? Yeah. And, like, everyone was mad, saying they're doing her dirty. Um, maybe. Mm. But I don't know. Eternal saying, Sunshine, I feel, didn't have, like, as lasting of an effect as it, a lot we, of the others. Everyone was saying she should have been nominated for We Can't Be Friends. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Apparently, she unfollowed the Grammys as well on Instagram. Did you see that? I don't yeah. know if she ever followed them, That's though, what I know? mean. Like, was she ever following them you in the first know. place? Yeah. So, the word of the year is brat. Congratulations, Charlie XCX. Imagine having the word of the year. I just think that's so iconic. Hopefully, next year, we can all make big show happen. Or camp. Maybe camp could be the word of the year. I'm surprised slay has never been a word of the slay, year. Slay, yeah. Like, that is the most fucking common used word now that we never used to say a while oh, back. Everyone start using camp, and hopefully that can be word of the year next year. But anyway... um. Keeping on the subject of being a big week for words is the Collins Dictionary, again, has actually had to add a new definition to the word error, as in era. era. I always say the eras tour, but it's the eras tour, right? Because that's how Americans pronounce it. But I don't want you to think it's error, as in E-R-R-O-R. Yeah. Um, But error has a new definition in the dictionary. They've had to add one in um, because of the success and impact of the eras tour. So, error in the dictionary now ha- will have another line that says, a period of one's life or career that is of distinctive character. Wow. So, now, um, Taylor Swift, like, this is what's happening. The main pop girl is Charlie XCX. Um, They're word changing of the, year. the definitions of Ch- fucking words. In the dictionary. That's what I mean. Is that not mind-blowing? Yeah, that's Like, amazing. imagine one day they got to rewrite the dictionary because everyone starts using glazy so much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you come up with a... A word that one day has such an impact on the world, they got to change the fucking dictionary. That's fucking slay. <laughs> That's fucking slay. Yeah. Jealous. I think that would be one of my goals and attributions in life. Attributions? Ambitions, sorry. Attribution. I don't know what's an attribution. I don't even know. Get me a dictionary right now because I don't yeah. even know what attribution means. But 
that's one of my ambitions in life. Change the world so dramatically that they've got to put me in the fucking dictionary. Mm-hmm. Iconic. We need to think of a little jingle here, Hannah. We need to do, do a little Have jingle. Have we been we'll... inserting the Queen yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I haven't listened to any. I know. Um... We need to work out a little jingle or something. I don't know if you'll have time to do it by the time this episode comes out, but I think I'm introducing a new segment, seeing as you like to say that I... What was that? That was an, that was my <laughs> parasite coming out. Sorry, I'm having a Coke Zero. Mm. And, um, you know, I was with um, one of my fake girls the other day and she'd never tried Coke in her life. Really? Yeah. So I made her sip it. She didn't like it. Wow. Who the fuck goes their whole life and doesn't have a sip of Coke? My sister is the same. What? Oh, she's a, she, all she has is water and apple juice, nothing else. Never tried it? Oh, I think she's tried like a lemonade and stuff, but oh no, hates, hates everything. Oh, except a Midori pineapple. She goes off for one of those. <laughs> anyway, um, seeing as every week you say oh, that here. I rant here he goes. about things, Yeah. I thought, I don't want my rants to impact the entire episode. I need to keep a level head because they've been getting out of control lately and I've been going off, you know. And I understand that. And each week, Brick goes, oh, here he goes. He's on a rant. So I thought what we could do is potentially carve out a part of the podcast, a segment of the podcast. Okay, specific to your Specifically for me to go off my fucking rocker. Okay, what have you got this week? What are we going to call it? We're going to have to call this something. Well, Matt's rant of the week, is that not just good enough? It's straight to the point, you know? Okay, Matt's rant of the week. And we'll have a little jingle eventually. I don't know if we've sorted one out for today or not. Because, you know, it's, we're on a time crunch here. But next week, we'll see how it goes, actually. Scrollers can give us feedback. Do you love or hate the rant of the week? Now, the point of the rant of the week is I get to rant, and then you have to tell me whether I am just in my ex- in my rant, mm-hmm. and you have to explain why you think you're on my side. Okay. Or whether I'm just being a dickhead, and you've got to tell me why okay. I need to cool down, calm down, have a glass of water. You need to calm down. Yeah. Okay. So, today... I've got three there. Don't read them all out because I've, I've prepared the next three weeks of rants. Fucking hell. But I've got three there. You pick one. Okay. Let's go QR codes on restaurant tables. Fucking hell. Seriously. It's not so much the QR codes on a table. This is what happened the other night. Sky and I, we went out for a lovely little um, night on the town. We stayed at a lovely hotel. Um, we had a little staycation is what they call it in the business. And we went to a restaurant. <laughs> And we got to the restaurant and we sit down, we stood there waiting for a server to come and give us our table. We had a booking, all the rest of it. Um, and they finally come over and they're like, hello, sit down. Here's your table. Um, and just order on the QR code when you're ready. Okay. I, I don't mind the QR codes at restaurants. I will say that's not part of the rant. I'll get to the part of the rant. QR code on a restaurant table. Love it. Especially when we're all just talking, chatting, and we don't want to be interrupted and Mm. things like that. Whatever. QR codes on a table. Absolutely love. Here's where it fucks me off. You've sat me down at the table. You've not said a word to me. You've not taken my order. You've not asked if I've needed any drinks. I've had to do the whole thing on the QR code. I've ordered my drinks. I've ordered the food. The prices are already insanely through the roof anyway. Here we go. Pressing order. Submit your order. Add a tip. Yeah. Add a tip. Yeah. For what? Yeah. You've not lifted a finger. I've done all the heavy lifting. Am I getting the fucking cash back on shop back or something? Because where's, where am I? Why am I giving you a tip? You've not done anything. You've not done a thing. What am I tipping for? The app. <laughs> For the surcharge. What am I tipping for charges. the surcharge of using the app? Get rid of the fucking app and just take my order on a piece of pen and paper. Let's go old school. To ask for a tip and it's it's 15, 20, 25%. That's an extra five, sometimes ten dollars on top of the bloody meal. For what? And then they make it so hard to say no tip, or maybe next I time know, it's down you in the feel corner. So bad. Down in the corner, you can't even click the bloody thing, and they add the tip automatically. It automatically added the fifteen percent one, the lowest oh, one. Oh no! And I'm thinking to myself, we're on there on a Saturday night as well. Not like it was public holiday or Sunday surcharge and things like that. I just think rant of the week: tips on a QR code at a restaurant. Yeah. Fuck off, because you haven't done a thing. You are just in your rant. I'm on your side. Oh, good. Thank you. Great. Okay, yeah. great. Um, I thought you were going to say that you don't like QR codes at all, like on 
restaurant tables. And I was going to say, I disagree. I love ordering off a QR code because like you said, like if you're in a big group and you're just chatting, there's nothing worse than like when you're catching up with people that you haven't seen for ages and you're chatting, 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 they come over and go, are you ready? And you're like, oh no, sorry, we haven't even looked. Like it cuts out that. So I love QR code, but I definitely don't think there should be a tip thing on the fucking QR code thing that you've just done yourself. Yeah. But I feel even worse when some FPOS machines, you know how you go to pay at a restaurant and they're like, here's your receipt. Yep. You're all good with the price. They punch it in. They face it to you and it's the tip screen. Yeah. And they're standing there with the machine in their hand like. No, I click no every time. I feel bad and I always go the lowest one. Oh, no. Because they're like holding it as if though to say, please tip me. No, not happening. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I will say, though, QR codes on restaurant tables, great. Love it. I think it works in, like, a pub scenario or, like, one of those. The vibe is very much. But this was a really nice restaurant on the water at Barangaroo. Yeah, that makes no sense to me. And I went, I'm sorry. Well, I'm paying through the bloody roof for the price of the food here. Yeah. And you want to charge me a tip. You've not done anything. The thing that gets me as well is, like, I used to work in lots of restaurants back in the day and... That was obviously before QR codes were ever a thing Mm -hmm. and we would write everything on a notepad. And by doing that, we were able to control how fast the orders were coming into the kitchen. Yeah. So like if the kitchen was under the pump, like the chef would tell you like stop taking orders for like, like just delay taking orders so they could get through their dockets. Yeah. So I wonder like how do kitchens now operate with orders just coming through left, right and centre at like the pace that the people place them? Perhaps though... The system is smart enough to stagger, stagger them, stagger maybe. It. So yeah, if, so they if used I to order like, and then you order, maybe your order doesn't actually go through for five minutes. Yeah, because we used to like strategically place the orders. They'd be like, "Is the table of ten here? Fucking get their order in now!" But then, like, wait, you know, mm. ten minutes before you take anyone else's because they'd want it to match their flow. Yeah. So I wonder about that. If any of you work in a kitchen, let us know. Yeah, let us know, but. The thing is with tipping in general here in Australia, yeah. you, I'm I'm a tipper if you go above and beyond. Yep. Like if you are just doing your job, sorry, you're getting paid to do your job. If you go above and beyond and I get like the best service and you do something special or make my night or make us laugh or you're like, I've had waiters who are like a bit charismatic and a bit, you know, friendly, not like Hogs Breath. Remember when Hogs Breath went through the time? <laughs> <laughs> no, do you remember Hogs Breath? Sorry. One day, okay, sorry, God, tell the story. Not Hog's Breath. Hog's Breath, which I love, like, love Hog's Breath. They made me fall in love with curly fries. Shout out to Hog's Breath. But basically, Hog's Breath, we used to go all the time. Love it. Gorgeous. They come over with the pen and pad, you know, and they do. And then one day we went to Hog's Breath. And the way they ran their business changed. Do they used to kneel down on the table like... It's that they yeah. would crouch down, on the, crouch table down on the go, table and go, have you been a hog's breath before? Let me run you through the specials. And I would be you. like, you don't have to do that. You can yeah. stand up. Like. They'd sit down with you. They'd yeah. come and sit at the table. Yeah. And go, oh, it's really it was so and awkward. What stressed me out is the pen and paper was out the window and they go, what do you have? And what do you have? And what do you have? And he's just putting it all in his brain. <laughs> and he's gone, he's gone, no worries. Yeah, got it for you. And what do you want yours? Medium, red. yeah, no worries. And then no. he just takes all that and goes and puts it in the system. <laughs> I don't care how good your memory is, pull out the puck and pen and paper because I'm sitting there going, hi, I want this, but can I swap that for this? And can I swap this for yeah. that? And can I have this sauce on the side? And I want that sort on the side. I want mine cooked however I want it cooked. I have, I'm one of those annoying people that has sometimes so many like changes to my mm, meal you're one of those people. that I want you to write it down. Yeah. Yes, I'm one of those people. Sorry. We're still in the rant section, so I can, I'm, I'm allowed to be ranty. <laughs> um, but yeah, Hog's Breath just threw all that out the window and just decided to come and sit down and have a chat. But sometimes, you know, you do get someone who goes above and beyond or if it's like my birthday or an anniversary and they go to the effort of like doing a little happy anniversary on our dessert or something. You know, of course, I'll give a tip because you've gone above and beyond. You've made our night. But if you are just going, hi, what would you like? No worries. And then bringing it out and putting it on the table and saying, enjoy. Mm. See, when I was a waitress, no. I worked in so many restaurants over the years and I would get 
in trouble at every restaurant that I worked at for spending too long, like, talking to the customers because that's what I fucking loved doing. Yeah. Like, I didn't just take their order and bring the food out. Like, I would chat to them, like, have jokes, banter, and I, I honestly got in trouble off my manager at every restaurant I worked at for doing that. But I feel like we need more of that because I feel like it, it's not like that anymore, really. And when you do go somewhere and you get amazing service, it's like, holy shit, like, yeah. that was really good like because now it is kind of like what would you like here it is thank you bye yeah hmm tell you something embarrassing about hog's breath (laughs) okay (laughs) i don't know if you ever saw this but when someone was on their training shifts they used to wear a big l plate um badge on their (gasps) chest and it had like a pig on it with an l plate (laughs) and i would feel so embarrassed for them walk around with a big l plate on it's almost like they were like a Humiliation, like, workplace. Yeah. Like, the crouching down with the arms on the bench, but like, hey, guys, have you been hog's breath before? <laughs> and I used to go, yes, and, like, tell them to stand up because I know that they hated it. I'm like, yeah, it's all right. You don't have to do the spiel. <laughs> we get how it all fucking works. Oh, oh, my God. I will say, though, their steaks did used to melt in your mouth. Oh, I lo- I couldn't rave more about hog's breath. I love hog's breath. Is there They're hog's fucking breath unhinged, any- but... <laughs> No, Hog's Breath Terrible, Terrible, Hog's Breath Terrible has been gone for years and it's changed. The Newcastle one's shut down. That, this is what it is. If it ain't broke, don't fix it because the Hog's Breath went off and then they changed it. They, they've <laughs> now had like four different businesses up there, up the top of that. And it has failed uh, time and time again because it's just not what they want. Hog, just give us a hog's breath. Hog's breath really was unhinged. Like the whole decor, the wooden yeah. but see things. The motorbikes hanging from the roof, <laughs> pots and pans and wheels the and bike plastic and jackets. cups, like blue, green, red, yes. like the plastic cups. And everything was just so, like you, you like <laughs> all the food had come out, everyone's plates were different sizes. And all the riding around the edge of the plate. And the yeah. meals were massive. Yeah. I think. Corrugated iron. Ryan fucking hell. <laughs> Someone was on fucking drugs when they made that business model. I think there's one up at Nelson Bay, like 45 yes, minutes. Yes, actually, you're me. right. I yeah. didn't, I went there if not long ago. there, yeah, can we go? Yeah, for sure. So and there's also one out west as well, somewhere like, I want to say Blacktown, Penrith area. I think there's still a hog's breath out there. Yeah. Please, can we go? Yeah. Well, what are you doing today? <laughs> I'm actually not doing anything tonight. Oh, can we God. please go to Hogs yes, Breath? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I'm in Sydney tonight. Okay, well, let's go. We're going to Hogs Breath after <laughs> and we'll vlog it. We'll vlog it and put it in our scrollers chat. That Wait, I'm going to actually well. look at it. Anyway, let's wrap this up and then we'll sort out <laughs> We'll sort out our dinner. Oh, my God, I've never been so excited. And then next week we can tell you all about our Hogs Breath journey and tell you whether they still crouch down at the tables or what they do. Oh, can't wait. But anyway... <laughs> Scrollers, thank you so much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed th- this episode. Um, <laughs> rate us five stars, all the rest of that. Please. You already know what to do. Yeah. Fucking hell, what a journey today's been. Yep. Did you like the new segment? Should we keep that around? Yeah, I like it. We'll ask in the broadcast channel. That's okay. going to be our question of the week. Yeah. Do right. we like Matt's new segment? Segment. What's it yeah. called? Matt's rant of the week. Yeah. Nice. Gorgeous. Okay. Fabulous. Well, thanks for listening. We'll see you on Friday for an episode of Close Friends. Anyway, Dale, I better let you go. I've got to help AJ with his proposal. Where are the sausages? <laughs> <laughs>